Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad 2019 Ultra Series Circuit. We are here in the Swiss rounds of the tournament. This is phase one of the tournament and we are going into week five of our Swiss rounds today. It is the last round of our Swiss rounds and uh, after this we will have the final standings which will determine what players group stages will be going forward into phase two of the tournament before we hit that knockout stage of the flinch squad ultra series circuit i hope you've been enjoying the matches that we've been featuring so far in the circuit and are looking forward to viewing the match that we're going to feature today so getting into it without further ado we are looking at the matchups for week five as you can see right on your screen in front of you now we've got Kazumi versus Salka and VGC, Luigi versus Costa, Yorine versus Johnny Hacks, Wormseye versus Ryan PB Herbert, we've got Pokemon VGC versus Cameron, Chansey Mancy versus Will, Krim versus Enifist Ace, Nappy versus Salty Electabuzz, Shade versus Stu, Nightlight versus Alex and Pinko VGC versus Marcus. We've got some incredible games for you coming up this week, but the match that we are going to feature going into week five is going to be Kazumi versus Salkrin. So for, without further ado, guys, let's get into this first one today. And if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to leave a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and leave your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know which player you're rooting for in this circuit more matches you've enjoyed so far and what you're hoping to see in the rest of the circuit as we get into the group stages after this week so as i say we are featuring kazumi versus salkra and vgc so without further ado let's get into it and i hope you enjoy this one today so as you can see we've got salkra on the bottom of your screen and kazumi eric on the top of your screen we're going into this one Challenging Eric in his standard kind of Pokemon gear. Not going to that stylist just yet, but we're going to see Salkrin lead off with the Lunala and the Tapu Lele here. And Eric Kazumi leading off with the Incineroar and Suicune. Suicune something not often that we see in this format. We're going to see the Tapu Lele activate its Psychic Terrain here. Going to nullify the more important fake out that the Incineroar is holding here. Intimidate going to be cycled off, but not really going to affect these special attackers on Salkrin's side of the field here. The Lunala in a bit of an awkward position because it doesn't want to take an attack from the Incineroar here, but it does have its Shadow Shield intact still. As we see, the Lunala go first before anything else and fire off a Moonguys Beam into that Incineroar here. Just get some chip damage. And we are going to see a Z move now. It is from Salkrin and it looks like it is the Phytinium Z. It's going to be from the Tapu Lele going to fire off this Phytinium Z. So Z Focus Blast. And you've got to imagine it is going to be into this Incineroar to remove it from the field as we see this all our pummeling straight away action packed episode firing off into the incineral going to be hopefully enough to pick up the knockout here if it's an assault vest it might struggle but are we going to see you are going to see the knockout here onto the incineral making quick work here what is this week going to do non for speed control is going to set up a tailwind here but it just fires off a snarl breaking that shadow shield on the lunala chipping that down and the tapulele and reducing that special attack on both targets here so really helpful Helping Kazumi out going into this next turn as we see Tapu Koko now hit the field for Kazumi. And it is going to overwrite this psychic terrain, get rid of that, and give Kazumi a little bit more momentum than he had going into that previous turn here. We are going to see the Lunala for Salkrin switch out now. He wants to reposition that, preserve it for later on as the stack attacker now enters the field. And is going to be able to threaten Trick Room setup as we do see the Tapu Lele just protect itself this turn. We are going to see a Z move now file out. It is hot pack this episode episode from each side we're going to see the Tapu Koko now activate its own Z move fire at it back into Salkrin's side of the field we're going to see the Gigavolt Havoc now launch from this Tapu Koko but which target is it into you've got to imagine it probably is into that Lunala wanting to remove that from the field as we see it is fired into it is actually the Tapu Lele but behind the protect not going to take as much damage so a really nice play there from Salkrin just to preserve his Tapu Lele for a further turn as we see a Tailwind now set up from this Suicune put himself in a nice position going into the following turn but got to be aware that there is potentially a Trick Room coming out from this stack attacker this next turn. Tapu Lele going to switch out and Kyogre now switching into the field, which is a little bit risky in front of a Tapu Koko that could potentially fire out a big, big electric type attack under this terrain and do some big work to Kyogre now. It does Primal Revert hit the field and it will bring this Primordial Sea to the field and boost also this Suicune's ability to do damage to the stack attacker that will not be enjoying any 
water type attacks here. We are going to see a Volt Switch now from the Tapu Koko into the Kyogre doing some big damage there. Boosted by this electric terrain and Eric going to be able to readjust his board position getting this Rayquaza now onto the field and nullifying this Primordial Sea with its airlock ability that we see activated right now. We are going to see a Scald come out from the Suicune is going to be into this stack attacker and do some decent damage under the rain here but obviously not as powerful because of the airlock that is active on this requires of the burn being picked up there from that skull which isn't ideal for Salkram but the trick room now set up and the stack attacker in a position to do some nice damage with rock slide gyro ball especially with this requires now is gonna a mega evolve on Kazumi's side of the field and revert into this mega form and become very powerful. Overwrite this primordial sea with the Delta Stream now and put itself into a decent position. But with the stack attacker burned, it's probably not going to take as much damage as it would have previously. But does just opt to protect this turn and not take any damage. Doesn't want to be doubled into here. The Suicune in a nice position. It's not really threatened by either target now, especially with the stack attacker burned. But is throwing out a rock slide. Going to just do some nice chip to that Suicune here kind of pick up the flinch as we've seen ice beam into that protect on the Rayquaza there no flinch and a snarl coming out from the Suicune just gonna reduce the attack power of that Kyogre for these latter turns of this match so the Kyogre not in the best of positions now probably is an extreme speed range Stack Attacker Burnt does throw out another Rock Slide, but reduced damage on that Rayquaza because of the Delta Stream not really doing too much to either target here. Just chipping away as an Ice Beam now coming out from the Kyogre. Reduced from that Snarl though, not going to be hitting as hard. Delta Stream really protecting the Kyogre a little bit more there as it is super effective, but does pick up the Freeze. Wow, so the Rayquaza frozen and the Suicune flinched. So Salkron getting all of the rolls in his favor going into this match. Further damage to that Stack Attacker through the Burn, but you've got to think think the tailwind pittering out now that Kazumi is in a terrible position this freeze on the Rayquaza has really locked this game up from as we see another rock slide coming out from this stack attacker again going to be protected by this delta stream but doing enough chip again to that Rayquaza and the Suicune flinching again with an origin pulse coming out now from the Kyogre just into both targets and picking up the knockout onto this Rayquaza the freeze there is so big and the Suicune doing a lot of work but just the, the rolls going against it here just not happening here for Kazumi, which is a bit unfortunate. The Trick Room is in effect. The Tapu Koko coming onto the field now isn't really going to enjoy the Trick Room situation. But we do see that the Kyogre was actually faster out of Trick Room, under Trick Room, than the Suicune. So the Suicune actually slower than the, the Kyogre once his Tailwind uh, has disappeared. The Tapu Koko are now going to try and stall out this Trick Room here as we see another rock slide from this stack attacker these flinches are not helping this Suicune at all though so the stack attacker still doing a decent enough job chipping away with these rock slides every turn critical hit there the Suicune flinches once again really unfortunate here for Kazumi not really catching a break here and another burn on the stack attacker with one more turn no the trick room has just ended so this Tapu Koko in a nice position now but with what Salkran has in the back you've got to think he's going to be able to get the Tapu Lele or the Lunala in and do enough to deal with these threats in front of him. The Suicune not going to be flinched this turn, going to be outspeeding the stack attack guy and pick up the knockout here, which does open the door up for the Tapu Lele and this Lunala to return to the field. Going to get this Psychic Terrain up once again. Isn't snarled now. Reset that from earlier in the battle and the Lunala hitting the field once again. Can the Suicune, I think if you're Kazumi here, you want to try and get a tailwind up if you can but it's going to be difficult to do Sai shock coming out no protect from the tapu koko into that tapu koko and revealing that the lunala is actually scarfed here outspeeding that tapu koko which is really interesting information going into game two Sai shock coming out from the tapu lele now into the suicune is it enough to pick up the knockout in the psychic terrain it is actually enough i thought maybe the suicune might hang on there but we see this game is going to be closed up and salkran taking an early win here and an explosive match back Back and forward the whole time, but the freeze, the big thing in this match on that requires that really opening the door up for Salkram. Once he got that trick room up, just to easily utilize that requires and take it down. So we'll get straight into game two here. Gonna see Kazumi on the top of your screen once again as Salkran leads off with the Tapu Lele and the Kyogre this time, preserving that Lunala for later in the game after revealing the scarf in game one. As we see the Xerneas and Suicune come out here for Kazumi. So 
Going into this first turn, we're going to see the Psychic Terrain activated from this Tapu Lele. The battlefield gets weird. We're going to see the Fairy Aura activate on that Xerneas. So the Tapu Lele actually outspeeding the Xerneas, which is interesting. That pressure activating on that Suicune, which then is followed by the Primordial Evolution of this Kyogre bringing Primal Kyogre to the field and activating the Primordial Sea, boosting those water type attacks with the rain here. So getting into turn one, we are gonna see a Tepalele just go for a straight up side shock into this Xerneas, no protect here, doing some decent damage, taking it down just above 50% health. The Kyogre actually outspeeding everything here and doing some huge damage, picking up the knockout, surprise knockout on this Xerneas, doing some decent damage to the Suicune and really catching Kazumi off guard as the Snarl is fired out from this Suicune, but a little too late here as the Kyogre is able to outspeed the Xerneas, which is a big turn in catching, like I say, Kazumi off guard. Now, the Ferrothorn brought here by Kazumi to deal better with a lot of the things on Sakurin's team. We are going to see the Tapu Lele now retreat here as Stakataka hits the field once again and uh, comes out for Salkrin as the Kyogre just protects, doesn't want to take any power with damage from this Ferrothorn this next turn. So we are going to see the Ferrothorn just protect, doesn't want to take any big Z move damage, especially from that Tapu Lele, which we know it does carry from game one here as the Stack Attacker does avoid the Scald uh, Snarl as it comes out. So we can now gonna change out as we see Rayquaza hit the field, gonna get rid of this Primordial C and really put Ferrothorn in a nicer position to get these power whips off against Kyogre that can only really threaten with these uh, water type attacks. We do see an Ice Beam into the Ferrothorn, a critical hit there and doing some big damage as a Leech Seed now fired off from the Ferrothorn, maybe predicting that the Kyogre switches out because of the pressure here and a Rock Slide just fired out from the Stack Attacker does avoid the Rayquaza and do some decent damage to that Ferrothorn after the critical hit Ice Beam there and another critical hit. This Ferrothorn is not having the best of times but it has got its Leech Seed, it has got its Leftovers so it's going to be able to pressure decently here and if we can get a leech seed onto the stack attack or maybe go for another leech seed onto the Kyogre this turn expecting the switch out maybe just really gaining some of that health back a bit quicker every turn if it can do that so requires a now activating its mega evolution gonna proc that mega ability and become a mega requires activating the delta stream ability as well overwriting the primordial sea once and for all we're gonna see the earth power fired off from this requires but a sugar berry uh, obviously activated on that stack attack i mean it is able to take this earth power and live another turn as we see the life orb activated on this requires strong winds gonna protect it from this ice beam but the ice beam still gonna do a lot of damage to this requires Put it in knockout range for this next turn. And another freeze. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Every time this requires has been hit with an ice beam, it has been frozen, taken out of the game completely. Poor Kazumi here. Hopefully it can throw out this next turn as the Ferrothorn clears out this Kyogre with a power whip this turn. Mysterious winds are protecting the Rayquaza from this rock slide, so just allowing it to hang on. So there is a little lifeline here if this Rayquaza can throw out this next turn. But you've got to worry about possibly a Lunala coming in now. It is scarfed from that first turn, but Tapu Lele just returned to the field. It has got access to that Phytanium Z, Z move, which we are going to see the Ferrothorn now retreat because of the threat from that. And the Suicune hit the field once again for Kazumi. Come on, Rayquaza, can you thaw out? That is the big question. If you can thaw out, you can get rid of the Stack Attacker and pull yourself back into this game. Tapu Lele going to protect here. The Rayquaza frozen solid, unfortunately, will not unthaw. And the Rock Slide coming out from the Stack Attacker doesn't miss. Is going to be enough to clean up the Rayquaza again. Taking it out of commission quite easily because of that horrible RNG there. And do a nice bit of chip damage to this Suicune. And now we're going to see the Mysterious Air disappear. The Beast Boost activate and give Stack Attacker a defensive boost. Um, which will be helpful against the Ferrothorn, not so much against the Suicune, but you've got to think that the Tepu Lele has just protected. It is going to have to attack this turn, and you would think maybe not into the Ferrothorn, just because we can expect the Protect there, as we see a Psy Shock now into the Suicune, expecting the Protect from this Ferrothorn, just wanting to get rid of the Suicune, but proccing a Berry here, which is going to restore some health back to the Suicune, and really keep Kazumi in this game for a little bit longer, as we see a Scald come out from the Suicune. It's going to be into the stack attack and remove it from the field. But this opens the door now 
for Salkrin to bring in possibly that Lunala, which will be able to do some big damage and paired alongside the Tapu Lele with this Phytinium Z move, which is the one thing that really alleviates a lot of the issues that give this pairing trouble. It, uh, we are going to see the Ferrothorn go for the Protect again, get the double Protect. So if the Z-move comes out this time, it is going to be able to withstand it and stick around for another day. We're just going to see Moongeist Beam from the Lunala now fired out from Salkrin's side of the field. It's going to be into the Suicune, do some decent damage and put it in range for this next turn. And the Phytinium Z now coming out from Salkrin, thinking that the Protect had already gone is going to be fired out and into the protect like i say the ferrothorn should be able to take this now behind the protect so not really getting as much effectiveness out of this but a side shock at the next turn will probably be enough to pick up the suicune and then a moon guys beam after this damage here will probably be enough to pick up the ferrothorn here yeah, Ferrothorn taking that quite nicely, getting that double protect off. Can Kazumi pull this out of the bag? Can he pull this back? It's going to be very difficult for him to do so, but we are going to see a Snarl here. So throwing himself back into the game, giving himself as much of a chance as possible to tie this one up to take it to a game three as the special attack does drop on the Lunala and the Tapu Lele here. The Ferrothorn restoring a little bit of health here. Can't protect again. It can go for it, but it's very risky as we see. No protect. Moongeist Beam coming out from this Lunala, it is going to be into this Ferrothorn, you've got to imagine trying to get rid of it, and is it? it's not enough after the Snarl, but a Moonblast now into that slot, following up, is that enough? It is enough to take down the Ferrothorn, and with the Ferrothorn going down, you've got to think it's nearly impossible for Salkran to lose this one, three Pokemon to one, another Snarl coming out from the Suicune. Again, lowering the special attack on both the Lunala and the Tapu Lele, but if Salkaran wants to, he can switch things around, and he will be able to clean this one up. But we are just going to see a forfeit, and Salkaran take this week's win. So he goes into week five with a win here, and you can see the results on your screen in front of you right now. So the results from week five, you can see we've got... Kazumi, nil, Salkran 2, that was our feature match here that we've just played, Luigi 1, Costa 2, we've got Urine 2, Johnny Hacks nil, Worms Eye 2, Ryan, PB, Herbert 1, we've got Pokemari 2, Cameron nil, Chansey Mansi nil, Will 2, Krim 2, Xenophis Days nil, Nappy nil, Salty Electabuzz 2, Shade 1, 2, 2, Stu, so Stu pulling out a big win there for top of the table, Marks there against Shed, Nightlight 0, Alex 2, and then Pinko 2 and Marcus 1. So as you can see, they are the results from week 5. And now, because this is the last week of our Swiss standings, we can move into the final standings of our Swiss. You can see Shed coming out on top here, tying up with Stu here for first place. Shed just edging it just slightly here with a 4-1 record. Stu in second, Yorin in third, Will in fourth, and Luigi in fifth. Costa 6th, Chansey Man C 7th, Worms Eye in 8th, Johnny Hacks in 9th, Salker in 10th, Alex 11th, Krim, Kazumi, Salty Electabuzz, Ryan PB Herbert, Xenophis Dace, Pokemon VGC, Cameron Marcus, Pinko VGC, Nappy and Nightlight in order. So as we see, they are the final standings and this will determine what groups each player will move into for the next stages of this tournament. And as you can see, we've got groups from A to E. So group A is considered Consisting of Shade, Costa, Alex, and Xenophist Ace. You've got Group B with Stu, Chansey, Mansi, Krim, and Pokemon VGC. Group C made up of Yorine, Wormsai, Kazumi, and Cameron. And Group D with Will, Johnny Hack, Salty Electabuzz, Marcus, and Nappy. And finally, Group E heading up with Luigi, Salkran, VGC. We've got Ryan, PB, Herbert, uh, Pinko, VGC, and Nightlight. So going into the following week's coverage of this tournament, you can expect to see games from all of these group stages and we'll be featuring matches from the group stages as we move forward until we get to the knockout stages where we will be featuring each and every match from these tournaments so we wrap up the Swiss side of this tournament we move from phase one and starting next week we'll be going into phase two so i'm very excited hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's episode a bit of a short one a really explosive game today featuring two of our players from the circuit salkran and kazumi really unfortunate for kazumi but at this stage none of the players are out all of the players have still got everything to play for we move into the group stages and the top two players from each group will move forward into the knockout stages of this tournament so all to play for this is just to identify 
the seeding for these group stages and what group you go into going forward. So group stages, everyone plays everyone in their group and then we move on to the knockout rounds after that. So things heating up very nicely as we go into this mid section of the Ultra Series circuit. I hope you guys at home are enjoying it and we'll be back very soon with more action from the group stages from phase two of the Ultra Series circuit. So until then guys, take care of yourselves. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.